Hello everybody and welcome back to Lego Empire and in today's video we have Lego Star Wars sets I would die for part 10,000 but this episode is a little bit different as you can probably tell from the length of this video. This is going to be a combination of the last 10 Lego Star Wars set idea videos. So you're going to see a ton of Lego Star Wars set ideas that I hope at least a few of them will come out in 2025 because to be honest every single one in this video is amazing. So if you've watched the last uh, 10 videos on these set ideas, this is a little refresher for all the set ideas, or if you haven't and you're new to the channel, you can just watch them all in this video and you won't have to find the other 10 videos. Anyway, with that being said, the two talented creators that will be making sets in this video are going to be Brick Set Ideas and Brick Wizard 59 on Instagram. So instead of crediting them in each individual segment of the video, I'm going to credit them here. Brick Set Ideas makes the sets that are in this style and then Brick Wizard 59 makes the sets that are in this style if you want to know who made each one you can comment down below and ask you know who made the Jedi Temple one that we're gonna get into and uh, all that so let me know in the comments if you have any questions but without further ado let's get right into this so first off we've got the set that should have been the 20th anniversary set for Attack of the Clones Dexter's Diner now if the specially molded Dexter amazing looking weight destroyed and this awesome looking diner wasn't enough we also get a few highly sought after minifigures including Jenko Fett, Zam Wessel, and even a Twilight Dancer. I mean I'm pretty sure this is a diner not a club so that's not very lore accurate to have a Twilight Dancer but still very cool. With 674 pieces this set would probably retail for around 80 to 90 dollars considering all of the new molds in this set. Moving on to a set for all of my fellow Clone Wars fans we have a talk on Ringo Vinda. Much like the Dark Trooper attack set from 2022, we get some newly molded super battle droids, which are cool enough on their own, but what makes this set legendary is the Doom Legion clone troopers, with two Doom clone troopers, as well as Commander Doom himself. This is a must-have for any Clone Wars fan, especially with this amazing hallway design that just screams Clone Wars. This set would likely retail for $34.99, as that is what the Dark Trooper attack is set at after the lego price increase next up we've got one of the most highly requested sets in recent times captain rex's y-wing the perfect 60 dollars set to be on shelves with the tie bomber giving us a much needed phase 2 captain rex remake a brand new arc trooper jesse ahsoka and her droid and an extra 332nd clone trooper which has become a fan favorite ever since clone wars season 7 came out on top of the perfect minifigure selection we also get another y-wing based off of the clone wars which we haven't gotten since the original Clone Wars set wave way back in 2008. And boy, is this a great addition to the collection. The box art itself also contains the 20th anniversary of the Clone Wars logo, giving this a perfect reason to release in 2023. Next on the list, we have a set based off of the new show, Tales of the Jedi, The Sith Lord. This set would give us an amazing young Dooku minifigure, as well as a stunning mold for Yaddle, and of course, Darth Sidious, who could use a new animated style face. This set would not only give us a nice obscure speeder for an obscure character like Yaddle, but also give fans a cheap way to get this extremely cool course on speeder that Anakin also uses in Revenge of the Sith. Priced at around $35, this would probably be the only set really needed from the Tales of the Jedi show. Now getting back to Clone Wars sets, we have the ideal play set for Clone Wars Season 7, Battle for Yerbana. Giving us a beautiful set with a lot of fan favorite characters, this would be the perfect set to get for a kid that doesn't already have these characters. Coming with both the 501st and 212th Legion, as well as Obi-Wan and Anakin, plus some droids to defend the bridge. Now I do think this set would be better with a battle droid commander and tactical droid, so perhaps this is more of a mid-tier set idea, still a big Clone Wars playset is always a win in my book. Also what I love about this concept is that this set is actually compared to the Spider-Man bridge set, which looks like a very solid set. It would be cool to see more bridge sets like this in different themes like Star Wars. As far as the pricing goes, seeing that this is a big playset and has nearly 800 pieces, LEGO would most likely put the set at around the $100 price range, unfortunately. Now here come the sets that are the most deserving of S tier, the top notch, most legendary sets of all time for LEGO Star Wars, all of which are based off Revenge of the Sith. Fittingly, the best sets are based off of the best movie. First off, we have a remake of an old set, the General Grievous Chase. This set contains both Grievous' wheel bike and the boga that Obi-Wan rides. And while I do like that a 212th clone trooper is in this set, it'd probably be best if Commander Cody wasn't and this clone trooper wasn't airborne instead. 
Now, aside from that, this set is perfect. It's always great to have General Grievous in his set, and we also get an Obi-Wan Kenobi that isn't burnt on his robes. Tossing the minifigures aside, we get a very well-designed wheel bike and a brick-built boga, which shows a ton of detailing. This set would most likely be priced at $60 due to the Grievous tax, which does exist. Moving on to the second best set of the video, we have Duel on the Invisible Hand. This set is the definition of the fun beginning, and reminds all fans of the scene where Anakin Skywalker's all over the place and Skywalks out of the burning ship. Truly a moment of all moments. In this set, we get, finally, an updated Count Dooku, as well as our old pals Obi-Wan and Anakin, two super battle droids, and the set I mean, <laughs> hostage Chancellor Palpatine. Now that we know the minifigure selection is perfect, let's check out the build. This build is designed flawlessly, effortlessly mimicking the scene with immense detail and very well-rounded building techniques. I mean, look at those stairs. But this does not begin to compare to the best set idea of all time. Now, you may be wondering, if I said the last set was perfect, how can the next set beat it? Well, it's all about the scene it's based off of. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present Duel in the Senate. Before I get into the banger build, let's check out the minifigures. In this set, we get Master Yoda, Bail Organa, two Shock Troopers, Masamita, and the Senate himself sporting a stylish maroon robe. And boy, I don't know where to begin. The new Palpatine figure, Masamita's golden staff, Bail's silver blaster, it's so beautiful. But try to contain your excitement about the figures for just a minute so we can complement this impeccable build. We have multiple points of entry into the Senate room, two different Senate pods, and even the Emperor's platform. Can you imagine being a kid and just throwing those senate pods at Yoda and recreating the duel? And not only the duel, but after the duel when they're searching for Yoda's body. I mean, looking at the checklist, this marks all the boxes for a perfect LEGO Star Wars set. 1. New Clone Troopers and a whole new Clone Trooper Legion. 2. Multiple newly printed parts and molds. I mean, the Masamita headpiece, the golden staff, Bail Organa's silver uh, blaster, which isn't new but still very cool, a new Palpatine, like newly printed parts and everything, and as well as that detail, there's more than five minifigures, all of which are brand new except for the Yoda and technically the Bail Organa, but the Bail Organa has never been seen in a prequel set, so I'm considering it like half new. And number four, a perfectly executed build. I mean, the Senate room itself is so big and it's so hard to kind of represent in a lego set of this scale so i just think the way brick wizard 59 executed this set design is just insanely perfect and just well executed and at number five a hopefully affordable price range at around 90 to 100 dollars as this is an 18 plus set and they are usually more pricey as the target audience is adults and obviously adults have more money than children a perfect set from a perfect movie we have the most legendary battle pack probably of all time, the Clone Walker Battle Pack. Now, you may be wondering, you know, Lego already made this, why are you bringing it up? No, I'm talking about this Phase 2 version right here, baby. This thing is a beast, all right? A remake of the original Battle Pack, but the ATRT is way more fleshed out. You got a nice little manual turret down there. You have a um, quote-unquote Clone Trooper Commander, just a Clone Trooper with a black pauldron. You have your Clone Gunner, and you have your two regular clones. And, of course, on the Clone Commander, you can just take the pauldron off and he'll be a regular clone trooper he's basically clone commander wilco which is pretty cool anyway this will be a perfect battle pack to army build your clone troopers i would buy like 70 of these like no question it would be insane anyway the next battle pack i would die for is the mimban troopers battle pack now this battle pack contains one um you know imperial mud trooper and three mimban stormtroopers and for the build it has an amazing atdt build this would just be a perfect set i have a feeling lego would make this like 25 bucks because the build has a few more parts than i think battle pack builds have nowadays um however this set is just amazing right we haven't gotten mimban stormtroopers in a while and now that i'm looking at it i just realized it's actually an imperial combat driver two mimban stormtroopers and an imperial mud trooper I would honestly rather have um, two Imperial Mud Troopers and one Mimban Stormtrooper, or just have five figures and make it at 25 bucks, um, and have two Mimban Stormtroopers, two Mud Troopers, and two er, and one Combat Driver. That would be my ideal battle pack for Mimban. It would just be pitch perfect. But this battle pack right here is very, very close to perfection. I would easily buy this, you know, on any given day for like 25 bucks or 20 bucks. It would be 
amazing because you know here at lego empire we do like imperial related things but on to the next battle pack we don't have a lot of time so here we have a battle pack actually from the 2003 clone wars series the underwater assault battle pack so there are two uh, scuba clone troopers in this set and they look absolutely amazing exactly 100 accurate to the 2003 clone wars and the battle droids also look amazing this would be awesome for building your genosis battle droid army as well as battle droids that are technically seen underwater in the 2003 clone wars with a perfect little um you know underwater speeder for the droids to man and the clone scuba troopers have their um kind of like repellers in the back and their flippers and dual molded legs and they just look insanely insanely good this would be an amazing battle pack for 2003 clone wars enthusiasts and would fit perfectly for the anniversary this year next up we actually have something that i've wanted for quite a while and i think a lot of other people want we're kind of getting this in a way but not um you know in the form everyone would quite want it and that is the coruscant guard battle pack so this battle pack comes with three shock troopers well, one Captain Hauser, but we can just pretend, you know, it's a it's an ARF trooper. And then a, a, a new molded Massif, which should be an amazing step forward for LEGO Star Wars. And then we also have a Coruscant Guard speeder that has some, like, police siren and lights on it. And, like, it, it would just be amazing. This would be the perfect battle pack. And one of these shock troopers actually has a shock trooper shield, which... It just, you know, it tops this set off. It would be legendary. This would go great with the Coruscant Guard gunship. Although, I don't know how many shock troopers you really need. You probably only want to buy, like, two to five of these battle packs um, for it to be, like, accurate. Like, to compared to the rest of your army, you don't want, like, 500 shock troopers and, like, 20 regular troopers, you know. Um, but, nonetheless, this would be an absolutely insane battle pack for 20 bucks. Imagine if they were still 15 bucks. Wow. Anyway... On to the next battle pack, we can't waste too much time on each battle pack. This is the last battle pack of the video, the coolest battle pack of the video in my opinion. The Super Commando Battle Pack. This is finally giving us what we always truly needed. So I know a lot of you Clone Wars fans out there do not have a good way of building your army of the Maul Mandalorians um, that we see in the Clone Wars. So you really have no one to go up against, um, you know, your entire Death Watch army that you've amassed. The Loyalists that we recently got, the Mandalorian Starfighter, and that we got in a battle pack a long time ago. So honestly, this would just be the ideal set to get the next battle pack. If it was this, I would have no shame in it. It comes with a nice red speeder, which I don't think you really see in the Clone Wars, but you know, you gotta have something. It would honestly be better if it was the combat speeder that we got, um, you know, kind of a while ago, maybe slightly smaller than that because it is a battle pack. And then it has a nice little weapons rack there, which is fine. A thermal detonator, very nice touch. Uh, this is an amazing set. It has the Mandalore box art. It is, just, it is just amazing. First set is an Imperial based set, which I love, the TIE Reaper. This is based off of Jedi Fallen Order, so obviously it would be a little late to release this set because now there's a sequel to the Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, but this set would be amazing because it would give us new figures like Cal Kestis, Second Sister, and Purge Troopers. I think Purge Troopers would be the most hype part about this set. And I think fans would go crazy if LEGO ever released a Jedi Fallen Order playset. It'd be much different than just releasing, you know, a buildable figure like BD-1. So this would be an insane set. I think they could add a BD-1 figure or Seer or both to this set, you know, because this would probably be one of the only sets we'd ever get if we did get this uh, from Jedi Fallen Order. So, I'm, I mean, you know, just like include all the figures that can kind of fit in this set, and I think it'd be even better. So, again, it'd be a little late to release this set now, but I think it would still sell pretty well because there are no Jedi Fallen Order sets out at this time. Next up, we have the Assault on Desix from Bad Batch Season 2. This is the episode where Cody, Crosshair, and a bunch of other clone troopers go and try to invade uh, planet Desix, and there are some Separatist droid forces waiting there to defend the planet and i love this episode because it makes the droids the good guys and uh this tan aat would be amazing to see in lego last time i got a tan aat it was kind of a mid pretty mid model it wasn't that great and it was way back in 2015 so it's almost been a decade since we've gotten a tan aat so i think you know in a year or two when lego needs to release an aat again i think they should go with this set because it would just sell infinitely better than probably any other AAT they could possibly come up with because this AAT would come with two beloved clone characters, Battle Droid Commander, Battle Droid, and I just think people really want a set like this. Next up we have the Accolade Attack. 
with Ayla Sakura, Commander Devis, and a Super Battle Droid, and obviously the buildable Acklay. Now, I don't know what this is based off of. It might be a comic, or it might be something I'm missing that I just haven't watched, or read, or seen in Star Wars yet, but I know Commander Devis is part of the 327th Legion, which Ayla Sakura leads. So, overall, even though I don't know uh, who Commander Devis really is, and I don't know much about this particular scene, I still think this would be an amazing set because fans have been wanting an Acklay for a while now, ever since Episode 2. It's been one of those cool little Star Wars creatures uh, that we'd want to see. And then Ayla Sakura is also a pretty popular Jedi. And then Commander Devis, you know, named Clone Trooper, you can never go wrong with that, and he looks pretty dang cool as well. And then a Super Battle Droid, you know, throw in one more Super Battle Droid, and I think we have it. Like, Super Battle Droids would be an amazing inclusion for this set. I think they're awesome when you can have, when you need droids in a set, uh, you know, to go against clones, but not... You don't have room for too many droid figures, so you just put them in super battle droids and it makes up for the lack of figures. But I know if this set came out, I'd probably be one of the first people to buy it because it's got everything I want in this set. Jedi, clone trooper, droids, and a buildable creature. I mean, that's amazing. And speaking of the 327th, here we have the ATOT Walker, which I actually think might be one of these sets that is on LEGO's uh, clone vehicle list for like $140 to $160 in the near future. Like I said in yesterday's Ask the Empire episode, I think that a turbo tank is next up on LEGO's list, but if it's not, it might just be the ATOT Walker, because they're both, you know, kind of equally popular. I'd say the turbo tank is a little bit more popular than the ATOT, but regardless, this set is amazing because, again, gives us some super battle droids, and then also we get Commander Bly and the rest of the 327th Legion in a set, and this would just be amazing to go alongside the Acklay attack. You get Ayla Sakura, Commander Devis, uh, Bly, the 327th Clone Troopers, Super Battle Droids, and you get an amazing clone vehicle, that Acklay. That would just be an amazing set lineup, you know, have some 327th, build your 327th Legion, maybe even have a battle pack out in the time, but then again, in a set with this many clone troopers, you don't really need a battle pack to go along with it. That That's what we saw with the 212 ATTE Walker, and that's probably what would be the case if LEGO ever released this. Next up on the list, we have the Imperial Command Shuttle from Season 2 of the Bad Batch, and I think you know, if LEGO wants a mid-price set that's around the, you know, 70 to $100 price range, and they want it to sell well, this is what they need to release. An attack shuttle? We haven't gotten a Republic attack shuttle in years, and I guess this is an Imperial attack shuttle, but same difference, you know, they're both around the same vehicle, and except this one is in full gray, which I think looks absolutely sick. And then on top of that, you get uh, Nala Say, you get this um, Imperial Doctor, I forgot her name, and then you also get the cool Imperial Security Commandos, which are like a top five figure, like if, if LEGO could release any figures from the Bad Batch Season 2, those would be in my top five, because they're just so amazing. And then, also, just the model itself would be absolutely crazy to have in a collection. Pair this alongside with the AAT, and then you could use a Republic Attack Shuttle, and you could put some clone troopers inside with, you know, Imperial Commander Cody, Crosshair, and you could land on Nessix, and you could have the AAT fighting against it, and you could even bring in the figures from this set and make, you know, make up your own little battle. It'd be great for kids to have. This set would be absolutely amazing, no matter the price. Next up, we have Fortress Inquisitorious. Now, this set is probably, you know, on my top 10 list for sets that I want, okay? An Imperial building, I'm already sold, right? You don't even need any Imperial building, any Imperial complex with Imperial minifigures, I will buy it in a heartbeat, all right? This set would be amazing. It would come with Kenobi, Young Leia, a uh, Rebel pilot for that snow speeder, Reva, Taladurith, and a Purge Trooper. Now, part of the reason I think this minifigure selection is just borrowed from other LEGO sets is because it is hard to design a completely new figure, especially when you're just starting out making set ideas, and I believe this set idea is kind of old, so it makes sense. Now, this set would be much like the Vader's Castle and upcoming Yavin 4 playset, and I think if LEGO ever needs, you know, another $140, $160 uh, LEGO Star Wars playset, they know exactly what to do. Fortress Inquisitorious, I think, you know, put some purse troopers in there, uh, and it would sell really well. And like I said, you know, a lot of the sets here um, on this list work well together on shelves, and this would work amazing with the TIE Reaper. You could have Purge Troopers in both sets, and that would just be amazing. Obviously, you know, include some more Inquisitors with this set. We only see Reva uh, on this box art, so include some more Inquisitors, and I think you really have a good set. Maybe even Vader, if you'd like. And definitely include some different uh, Imperial and personnel. Like, you gotta have Stormtroopers, you gotta have some different Imperial officers. That, that's what I think, anyway. So that would just be an absolutely incredible set to get. One of the best playsets LEGO could probably bring us, um, you know, here in 2023. Now for the final set of the video, we have 
the 241 or 241st Tux Clone Trooper Battle Pack. Now this is from the upcoming Tucktales short Clone Wars film, and this is a fan film. So this is just I don't know if you've seen the pictures of this fan film, but it looks very, very close to, you know, official Clone Wars style animation. And so this inspired uh, somebody to make a battle pack about this, and this would just be awesome, alright? These clone troopers are highly sought after in the LEGO community and in the Star Wars space just because they are fan made, which really makes them special, and it kind of ties back to the Clone Wars, and everybody loves the Clone Wars. So this would be an amazing set, has the spider droid that is shown in the trailer for the short film, and it's even on the ceiling, so that looks awesome. I mean, the spider droid looks a little bit funky, that model, I don't know how I, how I think about that model, uh, but this would just be awesome, it has a little turret that the upcoming 332nd Clone Troopers Battle Pack has, um, so you know, nice little play feature for kids. And the figures in this set, you know, you got Captain Tuck, you got that heavy Clone Trooper, and then you have two grunts, so this would just be awesome, perfect set uh, to release alongside the Tucktales thing. I know LEGO is, is no in no way, shape, or form ever going to make a set based off a fan film, but if they did, I know this would sell well because I see the popularity in the community. Everybody wants Tucktail minifigures because it is just like new Clone Wars. It's like Clone Wars Season 8, basically. So everybody wants it, and that that includes me. I would love a set like this. That is the TIE Crawler. Now, ignore the piece count. The piece count of 1,082 is inaccurate because I made this from the ATTE box art. Uh, anyway, this set is amazing. Why is it amazing? because it's from Legends and it's Imperial based and you know on this channel we love the Empire so first of all this TIE Crawler build looks really really polished looks amazing great upgrade to the original set and the minifigure selection would be so great I mean if you wanted to build a Lego Empire this would honestly not be too bad of a set if you also wanted a cool, you know, tie vehicle. And I'm sure multiple people on YouTube would make alternate builds for it. So you wouldn't be buying, you know, a ton of just tie crawlers for your uh, army. But that would be cool even if you did have a ton of tie crawlers. But seriously, the minifigures with two shadow troopers, two storm troopers, and one uh, special tie fighter pilot would just be really, really awesome. It'd be cool if we got a tie fighter pilot with something, uh, you know, a little bit different about him to signify that he's a, you know, a tie crawler pilot. Pilot, not a regular TIE fighter because there's a huge difference because TIE crawlers are basically just a you know a rolling tank on the ground. Next up we actually have Invasion of Kato Nemoidia with Ahsoka Tano's Jedi Interceptor and Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. Now I already have Anakin's Jedi Interceptor so that wouldn't be the main selling point for this set. The main selling point for this set would be the Ahsoka minifigure, the Captain Rex, Ahsoka's droid, and of course Ahsoka's Interceptor and getting a new Clone Wars Anakin would also be really really great. And this set would come with buzz droids as well which would just be awesome and I think it'd be great to get you know we already got Ahsoka's uh, Starfighter from the you know first part of the Clone Wars and then the second part of the Clone Wars with the Jedi ships getting an upgrade from Starfighters to Interceptors then we could get Ahsoka's Jedi Interceptor and I think it'd be really really cool and just another set with Captain Rex uh, would be nice maybe if he's a little bit different like he has a different uh, face print just to, just to differentiate from the Venator one a little bit because I feel like that would get stale very quickly even though it is a very good figure uh, anyway with that being said this set would probably be priced at around 80 to 100 dollars even with 624 parts there's no way lego would sell this for cheap anyway next up we have a diorama set the wrong jedi diorama with some jedi temple structures anakin and ahsoka and this is the scene from the clone wars if you haven't watched where ahsoka is leaving the jedi order it is a very emotional scene and i think a ton of clone wars fans would buy this set just purely based off the emotions you feel in that scene i think they would just get tons of people to buy this set not to mention getting an ahsoka minifigure with arm printing would be absolutely crazy uh just great you know a clone wars version i mean and then of course another set with an updated anakin skywalker that would just be awesome uh, and as you can see on the left it would show some amazing corsant uh, scenes from the show uh, and that would just be awesome uh to to get a set like this and then with the 20th anniversary clone wars plaque that would just be the cherry on top and next up, we have a huge playset with the Invisible Hand from Revenge of the Sith. If you didn't know, this is the big Separatist ship that Anakin and Obi-Wan go on to and save the Chancellor from. Um, so this set would include Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, Chancellor Palpatine, Count Dooku, Geno Grievous, R2-D2, a super battle droid, and a regular battle droid. Now, real quick, I think the minifigures would be much better if there's two super battle droids and two regular battle droids instead of just one of each, because uh, I think one of each is a bit awkward. Anyway, with that being said, this minifigure selection is absolutely amazing. Not to mention, this invisible hand build is so great, alright? 
hats off to you, Brickwizard Trip Nine. You did great on this set. I mean, you do great on every single set idea you do, pretty much. But every single set, you improve, and that's really nice to see. Uh, with all the interior space in this set, I think it would make a really great play set. Obviously, it'd be downscaled uh, from the invisible hand we see in Revenge of the Sith a little bit. You know, it wouldn't be like full size, because that'd be humongous that'd have to be a huge ucs set um but for this play set i think lego would, could bring us a pretty solid build with an interior if it looked like this this could easily make up a, you know 160 170 dollar spot in a summer set wave and then next up, we have the Venator Class Star Destroyer versus Invisible Hands. Now, the last set was an Invisible Hand playset, but this set is actually going to be like a big diorama slash combo set. It would be featuring, you know, the Venator and then also the Invisible Hand in one combo set. So you can make this a combo set with a play scale Venator and an Invisible uh, Hand. If they're both on shelves, you can make it a combo set, or you could just make this a separate set from the Invisible Hand and maybe make a different scaled model if you wanted to. You can make it more like a diorama set but the way brick wars of 59 did this is basically just two big play sets and i really like how he did that um for the minifigures you can see on the side we have some clone troopers uh some nemordian pilot kind of guy some super battle droids battle droids General Grievous, Count Dooku, Anakin, Obi-Wan, obviously Palpatine, and a clone officer. So very, very solid minifigure lineup there. And I think this would just be an amazing set. Obviously, Lego would have to price this at like $250 to $350. Uh, really broad price point, but somewhere in between there, most likely. That would just be a dream set for any prequel fan. And then finally, based off Season 7 of the Clone Wars, we have the Republic Attack Gunship. Now, yes, we just recently got a course on Guard Gunship, but I mean, you know, three, four years on the line, we could get this gunship, and that would just be absolutely crazy to get with a Season 7 Ahsoka, Captain Rex. Again, hopefully LEGO would, you know, make this minifigure a little bit different than the UCS version. Bo-Katan Kryze, a 332nd Clone Trooper, and two Maul Mandalorian, aka Mandalorian Super Commandos. Now, the one gripe I have with this set i think there should be that one named character uh for the mandalorian should be a great character uh to include in this set to you know go up against bo katan specifically and then maybe one more 332nd clone trooper just one of them seems kind of blank and even a pilot a clone pilot would go a long way because <laughs> in the set idea captain rex is piloting a gunship and i don't think he ever does that in the clone wars uh but who knows maybe brick wizard is just trying to make this set accurate to how lego would make it and if that what if that is what he was doing he's probably right like this is a downscaled gunship i think that was the whole point to make this set like the coruscant guard gunship so you got you know uh, a, a clone trooper that is not a pilot piloting the gunship and then yeah so that's <laughs> that's kind of funny if that's what he was doing i think that's probably what he was aiming at because why else would you put cap and rex in the cockpit of a gunship um anyway uh clone wars slash revenge of the sith set with the atot walker now I think, first of all, I think this set should be the next set LEGO makes for the $140 to $150 um, price point that they do pretty much every summer now with clone sets, um, because this would be an amazing chance to include some more Super Battle Droids in other sets, you know, other than the Battle Pack that's coming out this January, and then we also get the 327th Legion for the first time in many, many years since the clone troopers were reworked. So here we get, uh, obviously, Commander Bly and some 327th Clone Troopers, um, two specialists and one regular Clone Trooper, and this would just be awesome. Now, first of all, um, for the minifigures, I think we should have more than four Clone Troopers in this set. I mean, add another regular 327th Clone Trooper, and then I think this set is pretty much good to go, and maybe a special Clone Trooper to drive the ATOT would also be nice, uh, but other than that, I think this set is pretty much pitch perfect. It's an amazing build. I love the the idea of the ATOT because it is completely open on the top, giving kids a great place to play with all their minifigures. And then uh, also it has eight legs, which just makes it a really, really cool uh, vehicle and very unique. Anyway, the next set idea we have is also a Clone Wars set idea from Brick Wizard 59 This is his newest set idea with the escape from Zygeria. Now, if you have not watched the Clone Wars, you will have no idea what this is. But basically, uh, in the Clone Wars, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Rex get sent off to Zygeria, which is a slaving uh, kind of planet. So here we have Anakin, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, Rex, and then we have the Zygerians. I don't know their names, um, really, but 
you know, there's that one leader who is female and then they have all the workers. Lego is for kids and I get that. Uh, so you can't really have a set based on slavery and selling it to kids is kind of odd in some people's eyes. Anyway, this set would be awesome because it would give us tons of unique uh, minifigures and that Obi-Wan is basically just um, an updated Clone Wars Obi-Wan that I don't think we've gotten in any other set. I, I think we got him in the Bark Speeder set uh, with Captain Rex, but obviously that Clone Wars minifigure is kind of dated with that old style head. So I think this would be an awesome upgraded minifigure. Uh, not to mention these Aguirians, first time we'd ever see them in Lego which would be another plus for the set. And the interior for this set, I think, is pretty dang nice. You get a throne for that Zagirian leader, you get chains and shackles and whips down in the basement, and then you also get a place with a mug and a, a wine glass, it appears. I don't know, I don't really remember this arc too much. I don't think this is one of my favorite arcs of Clone Wars, but it's still a very unique set to get. I think it'd be kind of cool uh, just to get these Aguirians in Lego. And then next up, we have a set idea from Brick Set Ideas on Instagram. This is in the Imperial AT-ACT as seen in Rogue One. This is basically an at, -AT but they're a little bit different. I think this set would be awesome because we never, we didn't get that many um, Battle of Scarif Rogue One sets. I mean, for the few we did get, they were pretty dang good, but I think this would be an amazing set to reintroduce Rogue One with a huge playset, including Shura Inoue, his friend who I forgot the name of, a Rebel Trooper, a Scarif Stormtrooper, I believe that's a squad leader, a Death Trooper Specialist, and two ATAT -AT pilots, but obviously they'd be ATACT, -AT, so they might look a little bit different, which would be very cool to get a unique and a new minifigure from Rogue One. Um, not to mention, getting a Shore Trooper and Death Trooper again, I think a lot of fans would really truly appreciate getting those uh, unique Imperial Troopers back on shelves again. I think for anyone who missed out on the Rogue One set wave, this would be an awesome set to pick up if you missed out on the original sets, which are also awesome. Um, so this would just be an amazing set to add to the collection. And then another Rogue One set we have from also from Brixa Ideas is the Imperial Hover Tank. Now we did already get an Imperial Hover Tank, but this would kind of be an upgrade to the set with an upgraded model that includes three uh, cargo boxes in the back as well as two shore troopers one being a regular shore trooper and one being a squad leader much like in the other set and then we also have an imperial hover tank pilot over there and Jin Erso with her awesome poncho and kind of melee weapon, I don't know the name of. Her silver blaster really tops it all off. That is one of the best uh, Lego minifigures for Rogue One, in my opinion, and that'd just be awesome to get that minifigure in a set again. Maybe add some unique print to her so the old one doesn't use, doesn't lose all of its value. Nonetheless, getting new Rogue One sets would be awesome, even if they are just a remake of the old Rogue One sets. It has almost been a decade, which is insane to think about. It is the Kashyyyk Defense. Now, I'm guessing this is from a video game or a comic because I don't really know this exact instance where Wookiees and battle droids team up to defend against clone troopers, specifically Clone Commando Sev, but this still looks like a sick set, even though I have never—I don't know the storyline behind it. I love that build. That build looks super clean, super refined build. Definitely, we need another, you know, Wookiee flyer build like that here in 2024. I think that'd be awesome. And the minifigures, Sev looks awesome. The Wookiee Warrior, it's actually just Snowy Chewbacca, but I guess, you know, that works too. A, a new Wookiee Warrior minifigure would be the best thing. And then two Kashyyyk Battle Droids, yeah, it's whatever. We we have a lot of those. There's no shortage of those guys uh, in 2024, but still a decent minifigure to include this set. I think it'd be better to have some B2 Super Battle Droids or something similar. But regardless, still a very cool set. That would be nice if you want to maybe get a few Wookiees and Wookiee Flyers, or if you just want a nice little set with uh, some cool minifigures. And a cool minifigure like Sev is definitely something to be excited about. And then next up, we have the set that I actually created for this video, and I also posted it on my Instagram. It is the Rebel Alliance vs. Galactic Empire Battle Pack. Now this is based off of EA's Star Wars Battlefront 1, and it may look a little familiar because it looks kind of similar to the original Battlefront Battle Pack that we got back in 2016, I want to say, but it does change it up a little bit because this is based on the planet of Sullust, where the rebels often have more orange uh, colored uniforms than they would on any other planet, which I think looks very cool. I couldn't really find a you know, minifigure to look exactly like the rebels do on Sullust, but they look pretty close resembling that. Uh, one of them is holding a thermal detonator and is 
using that big blaster. I don't know exactly what that's called, but it's like a little solar cannon. Looks very cool. Then you have another rebel with a longer rifle, stud shooter. You like stud shooters, don't like stud shooters, doesn't really matter. Just one of them in this set. And then we have that droid there that we see in the Battlefront game that actually fires for you. It's like the Rebel Alliance equivalent of the Viper probe droid. So it is actually shooting the shock trooper. It looks like the shock trooper is shooting it, uh, kind of, if you look at it from a certain angle, but it actually is getting shot by that droid. So that's awesome. Not to mention this set includes a shock trooper, a magma trooper, and two jet troopers, which are also the same as a magma trooper, except they don't really have a backpack or a pauldron, but we also get a micro A-Wing in this set, which I think it'd be cool to have a micro A-Wing, right? We got that kind of micro to midi scale a Y-Wing in the Yavin 4 set, so a, a, an A-Wing of that same scale would be cool. And then we also get a little blaster cannon for the Magma Stormtrooper, and my favorite build in the entire set is going to be that turbo laser cannon. Now, looking back on this set, I think it'd be probably nice if we just added a little probe droid a uh, Viper probe droid build in there as well since we have a droid on the rebel side to do but then again This set still has four very nice builds and I just I would kill for a battlefront battle pack you guys And Celos is my favorite planet in the entire game probably so I definitely love for Lego to make more sets based off of battlefront and then getting into some clone war sets made by brick wizard 59 on Instagram first of all we have the box which would be a diorama 18 plus kind of set simple similar to the temple of doom indiana jones set as you can see from this photo from brick wizard comparing the two they use the same exact concept now first of all the minifigures for this set are absolutely outstanding i mean look at that selection we got embo count Dooku, the one bounty hunter i don't know the name of looks like a little octopus type of guy and then we got cad bane and of course rako hardeen who is obi-wan and the build for this set is absolutely crazy i love how brick wizard chose to depict this episode in this format first of all the first room all the way to the left we have those boxes with the lasers on them that you have to uh, kind of jump from one to the other and that's just the the build for that looks absolutely amazing. I love the details on the wall. And then the middle build is the one where the two laser walls are converging on the center and you have to find a way out of the room in time. And then the, and then the last trap is going to be the one where they have to snipe targets in the wall. And you can see one of those yellow targets moving around on the wall there. And Count Dooku is watching him. That This set is just an amazing Clone Wars set. Love the box. The box is an amazing, amazing episode, or arc of episodes, I should say, uh, with that whole plot, and I just love it. And then going to a Clone Wars set from earlier seasons of the Clone Wars, we have Escape from Abrogado, which I don't know what Abrogado is. It's that planet in the background, but this is when... Plo Koon and his wolf pack are separated from the Venator or from the star cruiser they are on when it is destroyed by the Malevolence. They are in an escape pod and then the battle droid uh, kind of hunter that hunts pods down is also uh, in pursuit of them. Boy, does this set look awesome. First of all, we get the return of the rocket droids and a rocket droid commander which is beautiful. Not to mention, the build for the droid side is something we've never gotten in LEGO before, which is just very, very cool to me to get a unique droid vehicle. And then we have two P1 Wolfpack clone troopers, Commander Wolf in his little uniform there, and an amazing upgrade to the Plo Koon minifigure, not to mention that awesome looking Republic escape pod, which we also haven't gotten a Republic escape pod in that detail. We got a little mini build in the Venator set, but other than that, I don't think we've really ever gotten an escape pod in LEGO, for the Republic at least. So this set is an amazing versus set. Honestly, LEGO needs to stock the shelves with various different sets that are all versus sets. I think kids would just go crazy for that. I would go crazy for that. I think anyone in their right minds would love those sets. You get two different factions in one set and you can build your army just by buying one set. Build both armies at the same time. And that is just amazing to me. Anyway, the, uh, the Ferrix Troopers Battle Pack. Now, if you didn't know, I'm a huge fan of the Andor TV series, so this battle pack would be a dream come true. You get three Imperial Security Troopers, and two of them have batons, and then one of them has a blaster, and then they all have shields, and one of them will be driving the speeder as well, which, by the way, that speeder design is absolutely amazing. I think that would be probably one of the best battle pack builds we would ever 
ever get from LEGO because it is actually accurate to the source material. Then we also get a Ferrex Inspector minifigure, which has that nice uh, female nougat face. And honestly, this is just the perfect battle pack. Now, maybe if I could change one thing about it, I would take one of the Imperial Security Troopers and st uh, swap it out for a Stormtrooper. I think that would perfect the battle pack and really make this one of the best battle packs of all time, in my opinion, especially with that build. And then also from Brixit Ideas, I'm revisiting this set concept that I already looked at before on the channel. It's the Assault on Desix. Now, I'm looking at this because it involves a Tan AAT, which we now know it is very likely we're going to be getting a Tan AAT playset for the summer wave of LEGO Star Wars in 2024. Regardless, the minifigures are Crosshair, Imperial Cody, a Battle Droid Commander, and a Battle Droid. Pretty solid minifigure selection, especially compared to the older Tan AAT, where we just got Jar Jar Binks and a couple of Battle Droids. I definitely think think this one has the better minifigure selection and I'm a pretty big fan of this set as well. Phantom Menace is one of my favorite Star Wars movies and the AAT definitely looks the best in that film in my opinion so I'd, I'd pick a lot of these sets up but hopefully Lego isn't going to come out with a Bad Batch season 2 version and it'll actually be Phantom Menace maybe one that you can army build maybe it'll come with like a Gungan warrior and then some battle droids maybe a droid car too and then the AAT I think that would make for a perfect little play set there and that's all we have for brick set ideas set ideas but we also have Brick Wizard 59 if you didn't know long standing uh, friend of the channel because we do use the set ideas a lot for videos and he has made two very stunning Clone Wars uh, set ideas very recently. We have the Invasion of Mon Cala from the Clone Wars. Now, this would be an underwater base set, which I think Star Wars definitely needs more of. We get an Anakin Skywalker with his swimwear on. We get a shirtless Kid Fisto, which I think is a figure a lot of people would want. Uh, one, for the memes, and two, just because it's a cool minifigure and he is an alien figure, so that's awesome. And we also have Prince Lee Char, another cool figure that we actually haven't gotten ever in LEGO. Doesn't surprise me, he was kind of a niche character in the Clone Wars, but I still think it'd be awesome to get... Uh, another alien minifigure in this set and then we also get two buildable aqua droids and those are technically included as minifigures in this set and then as far as the build goes we have uh, you know that big squid like separatist build but we also get that little vehicle that we see the republic and anakin uh, driving around underwater to go faster and then there's also blasters included on that little mini build and i just think brick wizard 59 did a stunning job especially on this model, or I think HP Bricks actually designed the models and then Brick Wizard put together the sets. So kudos to both of those people, uh, made an incredible set. And then next up here, lastly, we have the RHO class medical shuttle. Now, I saved the best for last in this video, for sure. Here we have the medical shuttle. Right, so the minifigure selection here is Clone Trooper Tup, of course. First time getting him in Lego. Clone Medical Officer, also a first. A 501st Clone Trooper, and a Clone Trooper Pilot in the Phase 2 form. That is another new minifigure, and then the Super Battle Droid. And these aren't just any Super Battle Droids. These are, you know, the most advanced Super Battle Droids variant for the Separatists, I believe. They have, like, rocket arms on both arms, and they have jet packs, and they're just a really over powered class of uh, super battle droids and if you watch the arc with these super battle droids you definitely know how well or how overpowered they are but as far as the build goes Oh my goodness, it is it is just amazing. I love the orange coloring on the top fin and that medical symbol. Hopefully Lego would make that a printed tile if they ever did create this set. And the Republic logo on the uh, other wing also looks pretty nice. Not as cool as the medical symbol, but still very, very good. And then the actual medical bay of the ship can detach. So if you wanted to, you could detach the medical bay and have it completely separate from the ship and then just act like that medical shuttle is a, you know, standard Republic attack shuttle. I think that would work fine. You just have to make some modern modifications, like take that medical symbol off and then maybe some other parts just to make it look more like a Republic attack shuttle. Do a little color swapping with the pieces and you could have a Republic attack shuttle as well as a medical uh, shuttle. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity uh, for kind of color swapped uh, sets, just like the gunship does, the Coruscant Guard gunship. I think Lego could be releasing so many more sets right now where that color swapping uh, kind of idea would work very, very well. And then as far as the minifigures go, I just want to highlight how good 
clone trooper top and that clone medical officer look first of all the clone medical officer i love that face print he has that breathing mask on because uh, i believe these super battle droids like rip open the shuttle so it is exposed to you know outer space so he has to put a breathing tube on uh to actually fight back against those super battle droids and not you know obviously suffocate and then clone trooper top he looks awesome love his face print but the best part in my opinion is those legs i love that blue stripe uh you know on each of his legs really looks amazing and then he also has arm print so does the clone medical officer. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, I believe there's three buzz droids in this set, if I'm not mistaken. Are, are those buzz droids? I'm pretty sure. They look kind of tiny for buzz droids, but then again, they look pretty similar. So I'm, I'm pretty sure there's our buzz droids. Very, very nice touch. Uh, and I think this would definitely be an amazing set to get, you know, probably like 140, 160 bucks for that piece count and the amount of minifigures included. A set that should have released sometime this year or should release this year, but isn't the Naboo Royal Starship with 524 parts, a few amazing minifigures with Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Queen Amidala, Captain Panaka, a Naboo security guard, and R2-D2. And real quick, I gotta say, the Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon look amazing with those updated Jedi robes. Getting Queen Amidala in a new set finally in 2024 would just be the dream come true because it's a very expensive figure and definitely very sought after by a lot of LEGO Star Wars fans, but isn't very affordable for most fans of LEGO Star Wars. So it would make sense to put her in a brand new set and what set other than her very own starship. This starship looks amazing. It is fully chrome, which is just awesome. There's a little compartment you can put astromech droids in, including R2-D2, which is just a great detail for the set. And then we also get an amazing interior with the cockpit that is also connected to the seating in the back with, you know, your mini little throne for Queen Amidala. And that is just super iconic from the ship. Love that. This ship would honestly be the ideal play set, uh, especially for the anniversary of the Phantom Menace. And then the next set is actually from the Clone Wars Escape from the Citadel. Very similar to the Dark Troop attack hallway set that we got just a few years ago and also similar to the set we're getting very soon based off Tanta 4, this hallway set includes Evan Peel, Anakin Skywalker, and two special commando droid variants that are specifically designed for the Citadel. And I just gotta say, first of all, the minifigures are amazing, right? This isn't a set you're gonna go out and and buy a ton of them to army build like you would with the Dark Trooper attack, but this is definitely a great one-off set, or maybe you buy two or three of them just to get a little commando droid squad there, and then you'd sell off the extra Obi-Wan and Evan Peels, but the Obi-Wan and Evan Peel just look absolutely amazing, updated figures, and then those commando droid variants just look super duper cool. I mean, the torsos have some yellow on them, their legs are like half yellow, and then they also have um, some yellow stripes on their head, and that looks amazing, and they also have updated print for their eyes, which looks pretty great, I gotta say it. And the hallway design itself is so cool. We've never gotten a Separatist hallway set or really Separatist hallway build in any set that I can recall. So seeing a Separatist style um, you know, like interior just looks really cool and definitely very iconic for the Separatists. And then you can also see Brick Wizard 59 include the um, 25th anniversary fives in this set because when he created this set idea, we obviously did not have all the pictures for the Tanta 4 set and we didn't even know that uh, fives would be included in that set. So we went right ahead and smacked fives on this uh, box art, which is definitely a cool little detail. And I think that'd be a nice spot for maybe a Arc Trooper Echo instead of fives, because obviously we're getting fives in a different set. And then next up, we have the Jedi Council Chamber. This is an amazing set. I can't really tell if this is a 18 plus set because of the black box art, because it has so many cool figures. You just gotta almost say it's not an 18 plus set because usually they don't have a lot of many figures, but nonetheless, it includes 521 parts, very nice chamber for the Jedi Council. And the figures, I think, are pretty perfect. I mean, maybe we could use one more exclusive cool looking Jedi, but we get an updated Anakin Skywalker, Mace Windu, which I can say we've never gotten a Mace Windu quite like that. He looks nice in those dark robes. Obi-Wan, same kind of style with the robes as Mace Windu. 
Yoda, and for the first time ever, a hologram slash like force ghost type of uh, Star Wars minifigure with Kiati Mundi. Obviously, that's a hologram, not a force ghost, but we've never gotten a fully uh, translucent blue Lego Star Wars minifigure that I can recall. So that would just be an amazing inclusion for this set. I think that would really make this set fly off shelves because that is just something we've never seen before. And you can recreate um, the scenes where obviously um, Kiati Mundi is sitting in his chair and he is on a different planet probably in some sort of battle and the Jedi that are actually in the chambers are talking to him. I just love that little detail. Brick Wizard 59 didn't have to include a special minifigure like that, but I think that really amped the set up and just makes it that much better. And then if you look in the back, you can actually open up the council chamber doors with that little mechanism, which is a nice detail, nice little play feature that he added in there. And, and not you really too much to that set, but it's just a set that is long overdue in my opinion, especially since it's one of the most popular locations uh, from the prequel era. And then here we have the Bounty Hunter Chase from Episode 2. This is probably the dream LEGO Star Wars set from Episode 2. You know, bar maybe the Dexter's Diner set. But this is I think this would work better as a mainline set. First of all, you have the minifigures with a very, very good looking Padawan Anakin Skywalker. Much better looking than LEGO's version. And then we have Obi-Wan Kenobi with an updated uh, mullet. For this hair, and then we have Zam Wessel, obviously another updated figure, Django Fett, and uh, that guy's name, which his name doesn't matter, all right? He's the Death Six guy. You don't need to know his name. He sells Death Six, or at least he used to before Obi Wan made him go home and rethink his life. Anyway, looking at the builds, Zam Wessel's speeder. I think he nailed the design with, looks very smooth, but there is a few studs showing, which is the perfect ideal look for a playset. You gotta know that it's Lego, but it also has to look clean, and I think he definitely nailed that design aspect of Zam Muscle's speeder. And looking at Obi-Wan and Anakin's speeder, it, you know, is very, very similar with that same technique used, and it looks really smooth. It looks like a speeder that wouldn't be so smooth, but really, Brick Richard 59 took this speeder and just made it look very, very smooth. I don't know why, but I just wouldn't expect a speeder like this to look that nice and flow that nice throughout the build. But it looks like Brick Wizard 59 uh, did a, an amazing job on that part of the build. So, hey, <laughs> kudos to him. And then we have one last set from Brick Set Ideas on Instagram. And this is a dream set of probably a lot of people watching this video. If you are a fan of the Clone Wars, you will love this set. It is the Assault on Scipio. Finally, we see the return of the droid gunship. I'm telling you, this is something we definitely need in 2024. Droid gunship needs to come back one way or the other. And what better way to reintroduce or bring back the droid gunship than to include a brand new exclusive clone trooper minifigure with Commander Thorn, Clone Shock Trooper, a Commander Droid Captain, regular Commander Droid, and a Super Battle Droid. Now, the minifigure selection is pretty good. Commander Thorn, amazing. Don't change him. One shock trooper, that's perfect. But I think the droid side of the build or droid side of the set could use something better. I'd say take away one of those commando droids, maybe take away the regular commando droid, and then add in three more super battle droids and make it so the droid gunship can carry all four of those super battle droids. Or maybe have it enough room for it to fit six. And then you could take some from the new battle pack and use a droid gunship with it. But I think if the droid gunship had the ability to carry super battle droids, that'd be so cool because this set is based off the uh, later half of the Clone Wars, which includes more sophisticated battle droid variants. You're not going to see your regular B1 battle droid used quite as much in battles when you have the commando droid and B2 super battle droid. So having the droid gunship being able to carry super battle droids just makes all the sense in the world. Although, I don't know exactly how LEGO would execute that because the Super Battle Droid mold does not have any studs or any way to have a LEGO connection. So that is the one problem. I'm sure LEGO would find a workaround for it. Maybe put a little, you know, groove in the Droid Gunship build, which you can fit the arms of the Super Battle Droid into. It is going to look a little wonky, but if it works, it works. I'm sure LEGO would come up with something. And there's also a brick separator included uh, in that side concept, which is just... You know, something nice, something extra, something realistic. And it looks like you can also have your commando droid uh, fly the droid gunship. So for the final three set ideas of the video, and the only exclusive set ideas for this video, first of all, we have 
Jedi Temple from Brick Set Ideas, and boy, oh boy, does this set look amazing. It is a 25-year anniversary set, so it has that special box art, an exclusive Darth Malgus minifigure, which is amazing because Darth Malgus actually um, invaded the Jedi Temple in, in the times of the Old Republic. And then we get a Revenge of the Sith minifigure lineup, which would make this a perfect set for 2025. We have Anakin Skywalker with his hood, a 501st clone trooper, Shock T, a Jedi youngling, of course, and two Jedi Temple guards, which I'd say is a pretty solid minifigure lineup. Maybe I would opt to have one more 501st clone trooper because they are storming the temple, but enough said, that's okay. The minifigures are all right, and especially that Shock T and the Jedi Temple guards, I love. And then taking a look at the interior, this is kind of like a dollhouse. You open it up, and on each side, you have different rooms. On one side, it looks like you have the Jedi Archive or Library, and then on the other side, you have the Jedi Council seats, and that's pretty awesome. I think definitely for a smaller playset, this would work very, very well, and it would also look pleasing uh, on the outside, and it wouldn't, you know, make you go totally bankrupt. You don't have to buy, like, a $400 UCS set, this would make do just fine as a pretty big play set. And then getting into some sets made by Brick Wizard 59, first of all, we have the RHO class transport shuttle from the Bad Batch Season 3. Spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched Bad Batch Season 3 yet, I recommend you click off. But here we have an amazing set that includes Omega, Crosshair, Dr. Hemlock, Emery Carr, and some Imperial and a Imperial TK Trooper. I wish there was more than one. Anyway. Yeah, the, the minifigure lineup is pretty good. I love that. This is based off the scene where they escape the prison, so Crosshair and Omega still have their prison uh, uniforms on. And the minifigure lineup is probably perfect, but I could do with a few more TK Troopers. I mean, come on, this shuttle, it, it has to have like at least three TK Troopers, in my opinion, especially if we're not getting them in any other set. But the shuttle itself is just amazing. I love how it has that whole like cargo hold under the actual shuttle. That just makes this thing amazing. And and it really bulks up the build a bit, and you're getting a pretty big model for almost 1,400 parts. So that is a crazy amount of parts for a playset. But so I'm kind of worried uh, what Lego would price this at if it was an actual set. But nonetheless, it's a great set, and I would buy it for no matter the price, as long as it had a few more TK troopers. And then next up, also from Brick Cruiser 59, we have the Infiltration on Teth. Now this is your go-to set if you want some of those newer clone troopers. Here we have Omega in her correct outfit. Hunter, a clone X trooper, Fireball, and Nemec. This set could have included a few more clones like Hauser, but that's all right. So first of all, Fireball and Nemec look amazing. They look like they're in their correct Lego style for sure. And then that clone X trooper, I, I really want that figure right now, guys. Like that is just a cool Imperial figure. Like Crosshair in season one, but now it's a it's a modern day version of Crosshair, basically when he worked for the Empire, and then Omega and that suit. Obviously, we haven't gotten her looking like that yet, so that'd be awesome to get her and her weapon. And then Hunter in the updated season three appearance, absolutely perfect minifigure lineup. But if we look inside the build, you can see we have a nice little hollow table, some controls, some cargo boxes. And all in all, not too much in the build, but you can't really expect that much. If you want a small playset, this is pretty much what you're going to get. And it makes absolute perfect sense. With only 400 parts, I'd say this is a pretty solid playset and definitely looks amazing on the exterior and offers a very solid minifigure lineup. Now, with that being said, that is going to be every set idea I wish to see in 2025. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and comment down below your favorite three set ideas that you would die for in the video, your three favorite set ideas, and I will personally look at every single comment. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video. Have an amazing day. Peace out.